back again at the thylakoid membrane. Thylakoid membrane is populated by two types of photosystems that cooperate in the light reactions of photosynthesis. They're called photosystem 2 and photosystem 1 in order of their discovery, but photosystem 2 is the one that functions first in the light reactions. Each photosystem is composed of proteins and around 300 pigment molecules. Only two of the pigment molecules, the two chlorophyll A molecules in the reaction center, are going to actually participate in transferring an electron to the primary electron acceptor. We call this organization of pigments and proteins a photosystem. Photosystems consist of varying combinations of chlorophylls A, B, and others, as well as carotenoids. These are accessory pigments that help pick up light when chlorophyll A can't do it effectively. An example would be red algae on the ocean bottom. When light is picked up by the accessory pigments, it is fluoresced and altered so that chlorophyll A can use it. When a photon strikes a pigment molecule in a light harvesting complex, the energy is passed from molecule to molecule until it reaches the reaction center complex. Here, an excited electron from the special pair of chlorophyll A molecules is transferred to the primary electron acceptor. This transfer from an electron from the reaction center chlorophyll A to the primary electron acceptor is the first step of the light reaction. As soon as the chlorophyll electron is excited to a higher energy level, the primary electron acceptor captures it. This is a redox reaction, meaning that the reaction center chlorophyll is oxidized, losing an electron, and the primary electron acceptor is reduced, accepting an electron. One more thing about, photo, about this photosystem here. In photosystem one, these two chlorophyll A molecules are known as P680. This is because they absorb light best at wavelengths of 680. So let's get started. When a photon of light strikes a pig pigment molecule in a light harvesting complex, it boosts one of the electrons in the pigment molecule to a higher energy level. As this electron falls back to its ground level state, it passes energy to the next pigment molecule. That electron gets the, an electron in that pigment molecule gets excited and then falls back to its ground state, passing energy to the next pigment molecule, and so on and so forth. So energy, but not electrons, is passed through the pigment molecules of the light harvesting complex. When that electron, when that energy reaches the electrons in, chlor, in the chlorophyll A's of P680, one of those electrons becomes so excited that it actually is captured by the primary electron acceptor. Once P680 has lost this electron, we're going to refer to it as P680, the little asterisk. This is the most electronegative substance known in biology. This needs an electron very badly to fill back up that, that space left by the elect in its valence shell by the electron that was taken up by the primary acceptor. Where is the electron going to come from to replace the electron that was given to the primary acceptor? Well, this is where the water comes into play. Photolysis, or the cutting of water by light, is a process that happens where an electron is removed from the water molecule and placed in the chlorophyll A molecule in P680 to replace the electrons given to the primary electron acceptor. With this reaction, a lone oxygen atom and a pair of hydrogen ions are produced from the water. The oxygen atoms quickly find another oxygen atom buddy and pair up, making O2. This is where the oxygen from plants that we breathe comes from. The light reactions don't stop here. We have to consider what happens to this electron that's been passed to the primary electron acceptor. It's going to travel down an electron transport chain to P70, P700, which is found in the chlorophyll molecules in photosystem 1. As the electrons are passed from P680 
to P700, the lost energy from the travel of these elect electrons down the electron transport chain is used to produce ATP. This ATP is the second product of the light reactions and is produced in a manner mechanistically similar to the way ATP is produced during oxidative phosphorylation. In fact, in plants we call this photophosphorylation. The electron transport chain between photosystem 2 and photosystem 1 is made up of the electron carrier plastoquinone, a cytochrome complex, and a protein called plastocyanin. The exergonic, meaning energies lost, fall of electrons to a lower energy level provides energy for the synthesis of ATP. How does it do this? Every time the electron, every, when electrons are transferred down the electron transport chain, hydrogen ions or protons are going to be pumped into the thylakoid space to create a proton gradient. That proton gradient is potential energy that's used to create ATP as it flows passively through the enzyme ATP synthase. Now what about photosystem 1? Remember, photosystem 1 is being hit by light the whole time as well as photosystem 2. Electrons in, the, in photosystem 1 are being excited and that energy is being passed along the pigment molecules until it reaches electrons in the chlorophyll A molecules in the reaction center. Excitement again occurs an electron goes up and is picked up by the primary electron acceptor of the second electron transport chain. We've got a hole here again, an electron that's missing. And I mean, if you notice, there's no photolysis or breaking of water to get an electron that's occurring. So where's the electron going to come from? Well, what happens is those, that electron that's coming off of the first electron transport chain is pretty low energy at this point, and it gets picked up and inserted into the chlorophyll A molecule of P700. The light energy coming from these accessory pigments hits this electron, re-energizing it and allowing it to be picked up by the primary electron acceptor. That electron is picked up by the by ferrodoxin, and in, which constitutes the electron transport chain of photosystem one. And the enzyme NADP plus, NADP plus reductase is going to catalyze the transfer of these electrons to NADPH. So we've got our positively charged proton. It's going to pick, an, pick up an electron and be transferred as a hydrogen ion to NADP plus, forming NADPH which is our second product of the light reactions. Two electrons are required to reduce NADP plus to NADPH. The energy level of NADPH is higher than that of water and the electrons in NADPH are more readily available for use in the Calvin cycle, which is going to be the next step of photosynthesis. Let's stop for a minute here and look at a mechanical analogy. This is from figure 1014 in your book. Our photon of light starts the process by exciting an electron. The electron is raised to a higher energy level where it can go up and be picked up by the primary electron acceptor of the electron transport chain of photosystem 2. As it falls down that electron transport chain, losing energy, it creates a proton gradient that's used to make ATP. So the potential energy of those excited electrons is extracted and used to drive the production of ATP by chemiosmosis. When that electron's again at a lower energy state, another photon of light is used to re-energize it in photosystem one. It's picked up by another primary electron acceptor and entered into a second electron transport chain. From that electron transport chain, NADP reductase adds it to NADPH, adds it to NADP plus forming NADPH, a molecule that's going to be important for its reducing power in the Calvin cycle. 
So the concept we just got done talking about is linear electron flow. Linear electron flow is the key to the energy transformation of light energy into AT, the chemical energy of ATP and NADPH. By energizing the two photosystems embedded in the thylakoid membranes of chloroplasts, the key to the energy transformation is a flow of electrons through the photosystems and other molecular components as the, such as the electron transport chain that are built into the thylakoid membrane. This constitutes the light reactions of photosynthesis.